Alrighty, we got a lot to go over as we recap another weekend of college football. It's getting close to bowl seasons, getting close to playoff time for the major, you know, the FBS. But we're in full swing here in the FCS. We have a wild, wild quarterfinals to go over, a wild Army-Navy game to go over, some wild coaching changes, and of course, the Heisman. Who won the Heisman? Uh, why don't we go over these coaching changes first? And that's uh, the first thing here is that Clemson's going to need a lot of stuff. They're going to need a lot of things. So they're going to need a new defensive coordinator. Remember, Venables went to Oklahoma. Tony Bennett, the o the offensive coordinator, he went to Virginia. Mike Elko, Mike Elko also got hired by Duke. So you know. I don't think he was part of Clemson staff or anything, but he got hired by Duke. A lot of people were talking Jason Garrett at one point for Duke, which that would have been crazy because I, I would have laughed personally if that happened. Um, so Clemson needs a lot of things, a lot of things. It looks like things are winding down on over there at Clemson. So the Clemsoning meme might be happening again unless things, you know, uh, unless we get something, you know, like Clemson being dominant next year. But, I mean, who knows? We, do, we don't know. We don't know. Well, we'll, we'll, I'll save all that junk for next August, you know. Um, so, there you go. Oregon, on the other hand, now this is going to be very intriguing because Oregon hired Dan Lanning, the, the defensive coordinator from Georgia, and I have no idea who this guy is. I really don't. A lot of people don't know. He's done some stuff. He's done some work in the Pac-12. He's obviously he's been the defensive coordinator for Georgia this year, and that's about it. Like again, I don't, I really don't know who this guy is. Like a lot of people don't know who this guy is, and a lot of people were exasperated. Like who, who is, who is getting hired by Oregon? Who is that? Uh, yeah, and this came late Friday night. And a lot of people dismissed it at first, and then it became official early Saturday, and we, we were all just like, wow. Again, just wow. Who is that? Who is that? I don't know. Penn State, on the other hand, you know, they got a sweet, sweet deal out of the whole Miami situation. They hired Manny Diaz as the defensive coordinator. Sean Clifford's also coming back. So that's good, right? That's good. Um, Heisman winner. I think this has been pretty obvious since the past couple weeks. I think this has been pretty obvious who the Heisman winner is. It's Bryce Young. That 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 was pretty obvious. I mean, he took a lot of the first place votes. It was not even a close race at all. Everybody else had under a thousand votes. Hutchinson had like nine thirty or something like that. He only finished second. Kenny Pickett, who's Fake slide play got banned by the NCAA. Yeah, that got banned this week. He finished third, and C.J. Stroud, who really shouldn't have been in New York, finished fourth. Uh, Will Anderson was fifth, but I think Kenneth Walker was sixth. So, you know, it is what it is. There, you know, again, I don't really, I don't really think that Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud deserved any sort of Heisman recognition because there were better players around them. You know, again, I've just been, I'm j that's just my two cents. Personally, I would have had Kenny Pickett win the Heisman, but obviously that not happened. I mean, the man, the man, the man caused a play to be banned. That That's how crazy this is. You know, that's how crazy it was. You know, but it is what it is. So we'll talk about Heisman winner, Bryce Young, Kitty Pickett, Aiden Hutchinson, you know, CJ Stroud, Will Anderson, and Kenneth Walker. We'll talk about all these guys, you know, in the New Year's Six Bowls once they come. Well, yes, we'll review or rather we'll preview all of, all six games here on the channel on in one video entirely. We're not going to do like separate videos or anything like that. I don't feel like doing that. Um, it, so, you know, it is what it is. So, we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll I believe that'll be like a Christmas, close to Christmas video. So, again, don't don't worry about it. You know, guys, don't worry. That'll be close to Christmas. You know, somewhere around that time. Um, 
and then you know obviously the recap of all of the New Year's Six games and all of who's going to the college football playoff championship game and that'll be you know that'll be like two videos and then I'll just I don't know we'll, we'll see um, and everything like that so why don't we get into the FCS quarterfinals because we had some crazy crazy games in the quarterfinals today and yesterday Last um, Friday night, we had Montana and James Madison. Unfortunately for Montana, not only did Samuel Acom get lost early due to an injury, he like injured his upper body on the play. Cam Humphrey was also knocked out of the game, leaving Montana with a backup. And the JMU defense was physical. Just they they couldn't they couldn't you know. They they just they just couldn't do anything. Montana didn't. They just could not do a damn thing against the Duke's defense. They couldn't get into the end zone at all. Cole Johnson tosses a couple touchdowns. Latrell Palmer also ran for a touchdown. And I mean, it was really just big play after big play for JMU that won them this game. Montana's defense was able to you know stymie the Dukes at times, but. Ultimately, it was those four big plays, you know, I mean, we're talking four huge touchdowns that were, they were all long touchdowns too, you know, that knocks Montana out of the quarterfinals. So, JMU will move on, and they'll be taking on North Dakota State. I know, <laughs> that was pretty obvious. Unfortunately, ESPN didn't televise the entire quarterfinals. For some reason because they just don't do that I don't know why they don't do that bad programming decisions as usual by the mouse uh, so two blowouts you know in these two televised windows on actual television as East Tennessee State got blown out by North Dakota State they actually covered the spread because the spread was like 26 and a half early in the week and then it dropped down to like 23 and a half um, so if you're a better, hopefully you got some money today because ETSU, they kept the Bison out of the end zone early on, but they just couldn't make any plays on offense. I mean, I mean, Rydell just never, I, I called him Riddell last week, but it's actually pronounced Rydell. Um, he, it did not seem like he was the guy, you know, looking at his stats and stuff like that from the season you know, for the season, it did look like he was going to be that guy. You know, that's why we talked about the running backs, you know, for the Bucks. So, unfortunately, the Bucks running backs could never get anything going against this North Dakota State defense because, you know, I mean, they just couldn't make any plays. Like, they never made any sort of dent in this Bison defense. And the Bison offense, once again, Nearly 300 rushing yards. In fact, it was like 278. The running game, it's Merrick Williams. You know, also backup quarterback for North Dakota State. Who I, for, I forgot his name off the top of my head. I didn't have him on the notes here. But, you know, I mean, Hunter Lepke, you know, there was no Christian Watson in this game. Remember, I thought he was going to play, but I guess he did not. I think he was still injured or something like that. Um, so, North Dakota State easily takes care of of East Tennessee State you know it again it did not look like it was going to be you know that type of game at first it was going to be physical it looked like but ultimately again you know North Dakota State just overwhelmed East Tennessee State it's it's unfortunate you know it's unfortunate that you know a lot of people you know like to complain about you know the bison dominance and stuff like that but I mean it it's it's just the truth you know, they dominated once again. And, you know, this, I, don't know, I don't know people were making mention of, you know, the stands being empty and stuff like that. And there's just a lot. Of, there's just a whole list of reasons. And it's not just like, oh, well, we're tired of the dominance. Um, I know somebody said something about it on, like, one of the Reddit um, subreddits or whatever. Or the, the FCS subreddit, at least, that, you know, there's been some, there's been some bad boosters. Yeah. It's, as a Texas fan, I know all about bad boosters, so, you know, it is what it is. So, I, I feel your pain there, man. Um, you know, people, I mean, I mean, we, we're still on a pandemic here, so there, there, there's just a whole list of reasons 
as to why the Fargo Dome was not completely filled up. It might be filled up next week, though. So it's going to be a thriller, a rematch of the 2019 FCS Championship in a game that I think I previewed and recapped two years ago. I think I, I, think I did. I, I can't remember off the top of my head. I know I did. So, I mean, that was a great game two years ago. And remember, JMU is the only team that has knocked North Dakota State, you know, bounced them out in the Fargo Dome. And, and I believe it was a semifinal game, you know, like three or, yeah, no, it was five years ago. It was about five years ago that they knocked them out. You know, because I think JMU won the title in 2016. And so, yeah. So this is going to be interesting. Going to be really, really intriguing. These two teams matching up. Okay, let's talk about what led us to this other semifinal. And that is South Dakota State taking on Villanova. And the Jacks, their old line, it was just too much. It was a back and forth game for a little bit. But unfortunately for Villanova, Isaiah Davis took over this game. Pierre Strong got hit, and I believe he got knocked out with some type of injury. And with, you know, Isaiah Davis with the two touchdowns on the ground, I mean, it was a, we had, what, 174 yards? And Oladokun also added on a few touchdown passes as well to Javon Janke. You're right, to Jackson Janke, not Javon. I misread there. Uh, so ultimately, you know, the Jackrabbits, they're moving on. They are the road warriors here, unseated team for the first time in a long time going to the semifinals. And they absolutely deserved it. A lot of people, you know, considered this South Dakota State team to be a team that was probably going to win a championship. And they're, they're, just, two, they're just two games away from doing it. It, they're just two day, they're just two more games away from doing that. We will see. We will see next week. And then the game that ended about an hour ago, probably about thirty uh, about forty to forty minutes to an hour ago, you know, number eight, Montana State taking on the one CM Houston, and what a performance by Tommy Mellett. What a performance. Masterful five touchdown performance. Two passing, two rushing, and he caught one as well. The Bobcat defense was also on point. They picked off Eric Schmidt thrice, three times. And that's it. That's it for Sam Houston in the FCS. They will be going on to the FBS next season. So, again, you know, a lot of people are going to say, oh, well, Sam Houston choked it away again. And I, I, I get your sentiment. I mean, what a performance by this Bearcats team to go 21-1 and one in this calendar year. You, there, again, there's not a lot of teams that can do that. You know, to go 21-1 and one in 2021. You, you just can't beat that. Congrats to Montana State. I believe this is the first eight seed to go to, to host a... Um, to host the semifinal, so that's going to be interesting. Going to be really, really interesting. So we got, you know, Montana State was in the semifinals two years back when it was that NDSU JMU championship again. So these four teams, we know them very, very well here. They've been been mainstays when I've been able to cover the FCS, you know. So this semifinals are these two semifinal games are going to be interesting. JMU North Dakota State will be on Friday night and an early well not technically early but I mean it's at a weird time for some reason because ESPN likes to prioritize, prioritize basketball over football for some reason. I mean again you, you know how ESPN is with the FCS so that South Dakota State Montana State game is at a weird time. It's at like 2 o'clock Eastern, 1 Central, and then I don't know why North Dakota State James Madison is so late. That's like 9.15 on the East Coast, 8.15 here, and I think, you know, you know, most people in North Dakota are in the Central Time Zone, so, I don't, again, I don't know why that's so damn late, but it is what it is. It is what it is. And last, 
but certainly not least, the Army-Navy game. Boy, what a game it was. The uniforms were crisp, beautiful, as usual. Of course, you know, you know it was in MetLife Stadium this year, and what a game we had. What a damn good game we had once again this year. Navy got to sing second. Navy did it. They they beat Army for the first time, you know, in a couple years, I think. Because, I mean, you know, they got shut out in 2020. It was 15 to nothing in 2020. And this time, 17-13, you know, Christian Anderson for Army, he was passing the ball pretty well. I mean, this Army team was passing the ball, keeping Navy off guard. For most of the for most of this game, when they had the ball, but unfortunately, unfortunately in the second half, Navy did not let Army get the ball back that much. Ty Lavatai had two touchdowns, and there were some beautiful trick plays in this game. Absolutely beautiful. Diego Fago with a with a beautiful fake punt run that I don't he he did not he did not intend to have that fake punt. He did not intend to get that at all. Like I don't think he, he even said he didn't realize he got the ball for that, and he got that huge, huge first down for Navy. And there was also a broken Philly special that also led to a Navy touchdown in this game. And this defense on point in the second half for the midshipmen. Just again, Army did not have the ball that much. I think they had it for less than ten minutes in the second half. And I think they had less than a hundred yards as well. And I mean, they. And I mean, again, defense was on point. Huge fourth down stop at the end. And again, maybe they end their season at four and eight, but they got the same second. And now the CIC is in a stranglehold. I believe Army keeps it though. Uh, but it's all. But it's split. The the the, um, the round robin. Is split for this year so congratulations to Navy Army still has one more chance to get another victory though in uh, the Armed Forces Bowl or whatever I forgot which bowl of game it was already because I'm not gonna watch that game so you know it is what it is there so everybody we have only a couple weeks left of this year and we only have a couple more Saturdays to talk college football we're not going to talk you know, about college football during Christmas. We're not going to talk about most of these midweek games either, but since there is an FCS semifinal on Friday night, we will talk about one of these bowl games on Friday because I'm really intrigued by it. And then the trio of ABC games on Saturday because there are there are three good, good games on Saturday. And, of course, the other FCS semifinal as well. So we'll talk about six games for next Saturday. I cannot wait. Um, I'm so excited to get the season, you know, getting close to it being done. Yes, I mean, it's been a long season, and I'm glad a lot of y'all stuck around for the ride. You know, if you're new here, of course, you know, to like, share, subscribe, click the notification bell, do all the good stuff that you need to do and just leave a comment or something like that. Tell me about your FCS team because, I mean, I, I, you, you could be a fan of, you know, like a team that's probably moving up like Jacksonville State, you know, or, or JMU or Sam Houston, or you could be a fan of a team that's not, you know, in the FCS playoffs, or you're a team, or you're a fan of a team that got eliminated already. And if you're an Army-Navy fan, again, I, I salute you. I uh, those guys are going to be making the biggest sacrifices that our country has to offer. I mean, you know, I don't want to I don't want to interject my personal opinions here, but you know, sacrifices are going to be made, you know, for the better of our country. You know, yeah, and I mean, uh, the, the, these men that laid that laid their lives out on the field today are going to be laying it out. In the battlefield, who knows where, and hopefully they stay safe when they do. And if they're not going out into the field, hopefully they do succeed at wherever they succeed at in their respective branch. 
in their respective um, responsibility as well, you know, whatever that may be. So, again, I'm Big Boy Sports. I will see you all tomorrow night. That'll be like, I don't know, like 9.30-ish tomorrow because there's not going to be, I don't, I'm not watching the Sunday night football game tonight technically because it's technically going to be Sunday when I upload this now. So, I'm not going to be watching the Sunday Night Football game tonight. We'll see you back here at around the same time tomorrow. And, I, again, I cannot wait to talk this bowl Saturday with you all because I, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to, to talk some stuff about college football. But, for now, I will see you all again very, very soon. Good night, everybody.